My name is Shayla Imbrel. My pronouns are she, her, and they, them, and my sexual orientation is panromantic asexual. My name is Siobhan. I, I identify as being bisexual. My name is Duncan Sisland. My pronouns are he, him. My sexual orientation is gay. Hi, I'm Savannah, or Savvy, um, she, her. So I identify as bisexual, and I've been out for a year and a bit now. What it means to be panromantic asexual is a little bit complicated, so we have to kind of broaden the system. You want to talk about what pansexuality is, the difference between romanticism and um, sexual orientation. Um, with both of them, the similarities, the similarities, sorry, is that they are a spectrum. So pansexuality or panromanticism is the ability to like and be attracted to anybody. Asexuality is the um, not requirement of a sexual relationship with someone. Um, personally, for me, what it means is that I don't enjoy having sex with people. I don't enjoy having intimacy with people. I identify as trans. The way a gender works is you basically don't identify with any form of gender. Uh, being a gender for me is neither female nor male. And so that's me. What up? Um, <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I don't belong because like, once again, I'm too straight to be gay, but I'm too gay to be straight. And it's like, you're in the middle. You're like at that crossroad. And it's like, there's times where like, as a bisexual, we're invalidated by like members of our own community because of that not straight, not gay, where are we kind of thing. Um, the negative stereotype around transgender people, it kind of comes from a place of like, I think a mixture of like either uh, not knowing uh, what these people are like or not having someone in your life who's transgender. Um, and so it took me a while to like figure out like what being transgender really was. And that wasn't something that like I found out through the internet or found out through like, um, like myself. That was something I found out like from friends who were also transgender. Oh, definitely. You do kind of see a lot of them, except I guess mostly it's more me just noting the stereotypes I seem to fall into, you know, being a theater kid or, you know, really enjoying things like musical theater or drag or anything like that. Stereotypes can kind of depend on who you are. Sometimes some people may not see it as a stereotype and just kind of an aspect of who I am, but also an aspect of the community. In terms of asexuality, a lot of people think it's um, it could be uh, trauma-based or it could be because I want to be abstinent or it's like it's not necessarily down to it. It's, it's simply I just don't like sex. A personal way I express myself is the way I dress, the way I like be who I am. Cause like, I don't have no set style. Like when I dress, it's like very girly or like very tomboyish. Like I hate using those terms because like clothing really doesn't have a gender. So I really like to like step out of those like boxes that society puts on us. Like I express myself in like ways of art and like I find that like for me clothing makeup is like a form of art but also like my tattoos like I have six of them and they all are ways of expressing who I am who my identity is you know um in terms of my queer identity in particular, um, the ways that I like to express myself are kind of like inviting myself into queer spaces, talking with other, talking and connecting with other queer people um, in and around the community, outside the community, um, community as in like my area, um, community with LGBT community and could be anyone. Um, and I guess like, um, 
you know, some, sometimes I like to express it through doing like my makeup um, a certain way that, that is seen as like queer makeup or um, like bolder eyeliner or, you know, actually putting the pride colors on my face, being like, hello, I'm gay. Um. <laughs> At the end of the day, for me, it really does kind of come back to like what I felt comfortable as a kid with, with, and that's horror. And horror is so strong for me, is because like the idea of like finding comfort in fear is what is so essential to me. So, do I feel like I kind of belong where I'm right now? Um, I'd say I do feel like. I do for the most part. When I surround myself with the right people, a hundred percent. And right now I think I feel like I belong. Yeah. I think it takes a long time and I'm only like 22, right? So it's like with time, maybe I will come to feel more of a sense of belonging. Um, I definitely don't feel like I still belong in, in society, in queerness. I think for like a message, like it'd be for like anyone struggling with their sexuality or like in general, is just like be honest with yourself. Take your time, but be open. And again, maybe be open to finding those little areas where you can belong, finding little communities of support where you can try to find out information, even if you're not willing to come out to them yet, just kind of Learning their stories, hearing their experiences might help you draw parallels to your experience and sort of help you get a sense of where you are on your journey and maybe of what you are or who you are. <laughs>